Hey guys, welcome to Church Online and welcome back uh, to all of you that catch us online. Apologies for no church for the last couple of weeks, although we do have a message from last Sunday. But um, we're a little bit, a little bit late in getting that to you. And uh, I just thought I'd give you a quick explanation as to what's been going on our side. Been an eventful couple of weeks. So two weeks ago, the first Sunday of September, we had a heart for the house offering, which is once a year we take up an offering uh, at, our, at our church service just for general improvements around the place to further our capital development and various things that we want to do around the house. And so that was just a fantastic day. We had at Open Skies PMB, a lot of fun, a big celebration, uh, just really being so grateful to God for the amazing community that he's building that we get to be a part of it. And so we took up an offering for that a, a couple of weeks ago. It was very much an in-house conversation. So we had no church online for that Sunday. I uh, just want to say that if you're part of Open Skies PMB and you missed that Sunday and maybe we haven't seen you for the last little bit and you would like to be uh, contribute towards Heart for the House, you absolutely still can. Uh, there are some payments that are still coming through and uh, offerings that are coming in for that and we, we're very grateful for that. If you'd like to give our normal, it's just done via our normal channels and you can do that there. The only thing we ask is that you make sure you reference it as H4H or Heart for the House so we know it's specifically for Heart for the House. All of that money doesn't go into running costs, it goes just into our next step as a church what we really believe god is calling us to do maybe a big thing we've got to take on we're still praying about exactly what that is but general improvements around the house and really more effective ways to reach people so that was the first weekend and then this last weekend we had hilton greg with us and just such a great privilege to have him with us the lead pastor from open skies kloof campus and um it was just a fantastic sunday in church and so we're going to be bringing you his message that he did following on our Beatitudes series, and he did week number seven, which is blessed are the peacemakers, just a fantastic word. Uh, but once again, like with Beggy, just because of the, or Colin rather, um, just because of the nature of it, it's better to bring you the, the same message that he did in Kluth. And so we're going to roll that now, and uh, then we'll get back onto track again with the last two weeks of Beatitudes, which I will be doing, blessed are the persecuted, week one and week two, and then we're going to start a brand new series after that. So thanks so much for joining us online today, and we really just know that this message is going to be powerful for you. Lean in and take everything that Hilton has for us and what God wants to say in and through him today. So we are on week seven of the Beatitudes. If you are just joining us tonight, we are on a, a teaching series uh, that Jesus uh, it was kind of the preamble to the Sermon on the Mount, and it's a nine-week series. So next week, we're going to take a break for Heart for the House, and we're going to look at it's more blessed to give than to receive, and then we're going to finish it off week eight and nine the week after that. So we are on week seven, and hasn't it been powerful? Have you guys enjoyed it? The Beatitudes, uh, I've heard a lot of amazing feedback about the Beatitudes from people, and they are confrontational, countercultural values that we're looking at. Uh, someone once said, well, you know there's a saying, it hurts so bad? I heard someone say, the Beatitudes hurt, hurt, hurt so good. They hurt so good. A another person once, when commenting on the Beatitudes, said this, each one is like a nail in the coffin of self. It's a nail in the coffin of self. And we know that the Bible tells us to die to self because these things are so counter to the way that we would normally do things. So tonight we are looking um, at a beatitude which is in verse 9 of Matthew 5. And it'll be up on the screen or you can look in your Bibles. And it's this. Blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. That is the verse that we're going to be unpacking tonight. And some of you are saying, how do you get a whole sermon out of that? Well, you can just wish me all the best. But that is the line that we are looking at tonight. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they'll be called children of God. The Bible is so rich in its content. And when you start to get into the words and understand the context and what Jesus really meant when he said these things, it really is powerful. And this word blessing, which we've been touching on every week, it's, it's more blessed um, or blessed are those. It's, it's not a superficial blessing or a material type is it, uh, blessing or even a, a circumstantial blessing, but it's, it's this internal joy 
regardless of what happens around you, that we have a contentment and a blessing in our heart. Does that make sense? It's happy are those, but it's not based on what happens. It's really strange to kind of get our head around that, but that is what this word blessing means. So the, the last couple of weeks, we looked at blessed are the poor in spirit all the way back two months ago. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. We looked at blessed are the merciful. When people treat you bad and hurt you, God asks us to show mercy. And then last week, wasn't it so good with Colin? Blessed are the pure in heart. And just to mention, uh, Colin, again, if you missed it last week, um, we spoke a little about Colin and Tony and what their season going forward is going to look like. And if you missed Open Chapel this last week, go on to, um, is it on Instagram? I think it's on Instagram and Facebook. You can catch the conversation that Jin and I had with Colin and Tony. And it was just amazing to hear them share and all the, the things that God had confirmed in their heart of what their future looks like. And we need to be praying for them and getting excited for them. Although it is sad to some of us. Um, but we, I mean, we, we, we certainly will miss them in and around here in the office space. But it's, we, we're just excited about what God's going to do in and through them. So that was last week, blessed are the pure in heart. And today we are looking at blessed are the peacemakers. And it's like this, this ladder that is stacking, that we're climbing this ladder. And I don't know if any of you have climbed up the amphitheater before and gone up the um, chain ladders. The, high, the higher you get, the more terrifying it is. Because when you look down, anyone done the chain ladders before? Hey, some of you guys. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, actually. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It really is an incredible view from the top. But as you get higher, it actually gets deep, uh, deeper in your mind. Like and when you look down, it's pretty scary. And we see this like ladder stacking of the Beatitudes, and it's pretty powerful. Now, we're coming to the seventh one. Now, just to say this up front, that seven was a really important number in the Jewish culture. It, it speaks of perfection. And the people listening to this would have understood the significance of the number seven. So they would have really been attentive to what was actually coming next because it was very important to them. You know, some people have their lucky numbers, but in Jewish culture, seven was really significant and important. So Jesus then says, blessed are the peacemakers. And peace was kind of the, the highest ideal in Jewish culture. It was hugely significant and very important. In a, in a world where, I mean, there was a lot going on. It was a pretty violent time that they were living in. So peace was very important. And I don't know about you, but even today in 2022, who of us needs some more peace in our life, right? And if you look at, they say the number one word or word that has been most used in the last couple, a couple years is the word crazy. How many of you said crazy in the last couple of years? Like it's crazy, everything's just crazy. COVID's crazy, everything's crazy. And I think we need more peace than ever before. But what's very important is we have to understand peace so we know what we're looking for. And all of these, we have to understand them. And it's like all of these are almost like a CrossFit workout. You know, they're, they're incredibly challenging and difficult. And they're not condemning, but they're hugely convicting. And I think often when it comes to peace, we look in the wrong places for peace. Many of us may think that peace is, is, is a negative state, or if you remove something, like for example, to get world peace, there's an absence of war. But how many of you know that there's many countries that aren't at war, but aren't necessarily at peace? If we look on a personal level, we think, well, absence of conflict or, or disagreement. If there's no dif disagreement, then we're at peace whether it comes in a business relationship, friends, or with your spouse. Like, if we just don't fight, then we have peace. Or if you go a little bit deeper than that, and you even think about, well, if it's the absence of stress or anxiety, then I will be at peace with myself. Or even for those of you who have a loud house right now, or maybe you've got young kids, it's just the absence of noise. Like, parents, how many times have you ever said, can I just go to the toilet in peace? Any parents out there? That's why I like going to movies, I've got to be honest. It's like two hours where I don't look at my phone, I just sit there, even though it's quite noisy in a cinema, it's just no one can bug me, it's quite amazing. The one time I was trying to get hold of Jin and she wasn't answering, this was many years ago, and then I ping her, you know, with the Find My iPhone app, and she eventually phones me back and she goes, I'm in a movie. I'm like, okay, sorry, I, just, I ruined your piece. And you can see that, that, that we try to get this peace. You know, if, if, I, if I just didn't have this boss, or if I was, I could just spend every day like having a massage. How many of you guys like massages? Okay, I love massages. It's just my best. 
well, if I can just go on this holiday, then I'm going to be at peace. And, and, and we try that. And it might bring temporary peace, but it doesn't bring everlasting peace. Jeremiah 6, 14 says this, peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. So they speak about peace, but there's no peace. And a big point for today is peace isn't found in the absence of, but rather in the presence of. It's not found in the absence of, but in the presence of. It's not being emptied out, but being filled up. And I'm going to explain that in a moment. So we're looking at blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. We'll get to the children of God a little bit later. But if we break down these words to understand them, when we look at a biblical peace, there's a word that they would use for that. Anyone know what it is? I heard someone go, Sh shalom. Okay, is, and maybe you've seen that word shalom or, or never quite understood what it meant. But shalom means wholeness, completeness, fulfillment, inner rest, living without defic deficiency or lack. So it's got nothing to do with circumstance. Shalom peace is actually found in the midst of a crazy circumstance. You can find it. And end of last year, we got uh, blessed with this uh, week away in the Berg. <laughs> and it was this incredible house. And we were right on this, like, edge of this cliff in um, kind of uh, quite close to Underberg, near Bushman's Neck. <laughs> and guys, let me just tell you, the most horrific storm I have ever been in my whole life came up. I, ha I cannot describe what it was like, so I have to show you a quick little video. This is us filming outside the window, just two little clips. Check this out. Pump the sound. It was absolutely terrifying. I mean, th there was metal tables and chairs on the veranda that just got flipped up, you know. And uh, I mean, the gutter was coming off. And at one stage, one of the kids ran out to get something. I'm like, get back inside. But inside the house, it, it, was, it, was, well, it wasn't completely quiet because of what was going on outside. But we were safe. We were in this pocket of peace. Although at one stage, I did think, geez, these, this roof could come right off. It was, a, it, it was honestly the craziest wind I've ever experienced in my life. And all I can explain to you today when you look at this idea of biblical peace, that in the midst of craziness with what's going on around you, you are safe in this pocket of grace. You're untouchable because you have a supernatural peace. So we have it. So blessed are the peacemakers. If we have it, then, then we, need to, we need to make peace. And the Bible clearly says to be peacemakers. And the word maker means to do. Anyone watch Mr. Maker on CBBS? Okay, some of you don't want to admit it, you know. Okay, we used to watch Mr. Maker all the time, and he makes all these incredible things out of like, you know, all like paper, and he, he just builds stuff, right? And God's asked us to do peace wherever we go. You see, there's a difference between peacekeeping and peacemaking. Peacekeeping is kind of like avoiding conflict. Don't upset the apple cart. Or, you know, when something's frustrating, you, you don't speak up because I just want to keep the peace. But how many of you know that doesn't work in, in friendships and in relationships? It actually sometimes heightens the frustration and eventually there's this huge blow up. Peacemaking often comes with conflict. And where there's a, a lack of peace, we confront that lack of peace with our wholeness, with what God has placed in us, this peace in us to create peace, to make peace. Are you with me? And then, so that's peacemaker. And then if you look at children of God, we need to be living out of our identity of being God's children. Because if we understand who we are in Christ, that because of Jesus, the Prince of Peace has deposited that in us, we can be peacemakers. Are you with me? I'll get back to that a little bit later, children of God. So here's a nice definition for this idea of being peacemakers. We are never more like God than we take the wholeness and completeness, the shalom of God we have into a world that desperately needs it. That's blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be children of God. Okay, so like all of the Beatitudes, you may ask, well, 
okay, great. I uh, understand it now, but how do we actually do this? So I want to give you three things tonight. We can never experience peace until, number one, we experience peace in our hearts first. We have to learn to experience peace in our hearts first. We can't give what we don't have. And sometimes it always um, amuses me. Actually, many people that are trained to be psychologists have the most issues, issues themselves. And I'm not saying don't be a psychologist if you have any issues, but I just, like, I'm like, I'm just a little worried. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we, we, have, to, we have to get our head around some of these things because sometimes people study psychology to fix their own issues. And I'm not saying God can't use you. They re, you really can. But I, I just kind of feel like we need to get this and understand this before we can actually make peace in the world. We can't give what we don't have. And I think often we look in the wrong places for peace. And today we need to look at the right place for peace, and that is in God's Word. So we're going to look at a couple of scriptures in a moment. But first, when it talks about experiencing peace in our hearts, I think uh, firstly, just a couple of things under that is we, we need to experience peace with our God. If you're not at peace with God, you cannot have peace in your hearts. Because God is the source of all peace. And if you don't have that, you can't give it. Look what Romans 5 uh, verse 1 says. Therefore... Since we have been made right in God's sight by faith. I mean, we can celebrate that tonight, that we've been made right, just in case you didn't know that, that Jesus made us right between us and God. That barrier has been broken. There's no guilt. There's no shame. We can talk to God, and that's why we can even be here tonight. We are made right. And I think as Christians, we need to continue to celebrate that, that we have been made right with God because of what Jesus did. We have peace with God because of what Jesus, our Lord, has done for us. That's why we have peace with God, because of what Jesus did. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. And we can confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. And that kind of sums up even why we can be called children of God. So we can all have access to God and we can have access to this peace and experience peace with God. Uh, subheading two is we, we experience peace within ourselves. Well, we need to experience that within ourselves. And the best Bible verse when it comes to peace in ourselves is Philippians 4, 6 to 7. I love this one. It says, don't be anxious about anything. But in every situation, it doesn't say some situations, in every situation, even the one where you're in the storm and things are going on around you and things are crazy, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, I'm going to come back to those three things in a moment, present your request to God, and then something powerful happens. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So you want to have peace in your heart. We need to have peace with ourselves, and the Bible pretty clearly shows us what to do here. And I think this scripture is so relevant in the world today, right now, with all that's going on, the stresses, the anxiety, the fears, the guilt. I mean, we're living in some crazy times. And we live even living on the back end of some crazy time. Do you know, I was reading up the other day how many parents are feeling an overwhelming sense of guilt because of um, COVID and not being able to teach their kids properly. I remember it was exciting in the beginning, you know, have a bit of time. And then eventually, like, geez, I don't know if I can keep up. You know, I remember we, we, we had someone in grade two. We're like, good. Thank God for teachers. Can I just say that? Any teachers here today? Just honestly, just give teachers a hand here tonight and those watching online. Because <laughs> we were like, I don't know what we're doing here. I don't know if we're good enough. I don't know what Jonah has to catch up on and, and the rest of you guys. I don't know what we missed. But there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of the world that has created anxiety in the last couple of years with all that's going on. And if you are like a problem solver, like to get things done or fix things or make sure you're on top of things, it's a little bit of a challenge because then you're going to have more anxiety because you weren't able to get that all right. I read this quote on, on problem solvers. Listen to this. If you identify this, it be, be amazing. It says, when a problem causes you to lose your peace... Don't hurry to resolve the problem in the hopes of regaining peace. But first regain peace and then see what can be done about the problem. That's good, eh? Very, very good. So often we want to solve the problem and then we're going to be at peace. No, no. Ask God for peace in your heart. And then just watch things just line up and fall into place. And God somehow has this 
miraculous ability to fix things for us. It really is amazing. We need to rest in that. Remember I said I'll come back to three things. Just a little bit of a, a side teaching here. Prayer, petition, thanksgiving. Just so you understand what this means. Is, is prayer is like we can come to God and say, God, this is what's going on. Like it's real. It's raw. It's like I don't know what to do, God. I'm just, I'm just going to tell you. You know what I mean? You just offload to a friend. You can do that with God. Okay? Then petition uh, really means is like, well, God, this is what I would love you to do <laughs> with my offloading. And, and it's asking God. It's asking for wisdom, asking for strategy, asking him to help fix our problems. And then very important, prayer, petition, and thanksgiving. Don't miss the last one, thanksgiving, because this is important to get peace. You thank God for the result you do not yet see. It's actually one of the Hebrew words to praise. You praise God for the result you do not yet see. So you can be walking in the midst of something crazy, but you, God, thank you that you're bringing me through. It's like healing. God, I don't see healing right now, but I thank you in advance for my healing. And this is what, with thanksgiving, I don't see the result yet, God, but I know you've got it, and I'm going to praise you that you've got it. Are you with me? You have to do that, church. Seriously. Otherwise, you're going to try and fix it yourself. God, thank you that you've got it, and I praise you for that. Prayer, petition, and thanksgiving. And then the, the, the third thing, uh, if, we, if we don't get the first two, I don't think we can ever get this third one, which is peace in our hearts. Sorry, peace in the hearts is the whole subheading. The third thing is experience peace with our circumstances. John 16, 33 says this, I have told you all these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, in case you didn't know it, even for us Christians, you will have trouble. It sucks. It's hard. You will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. And you need to almost expect your circumstances to give you opportunities to lose your peace. I'm not saying that you have to lose your peace, but it's going to happen. There will be circumstances that surround you that, that you are faced with that potentially you can lose your peace. Okay, And what's crazy is sometimes it's the big issues that actually push us closer to God, but it's the little, little things, the small issues that take our peace away. You know the little things that just weigh on you and things that just like oh, you lie awake at night thinking about? It's those small things. And I find that when, when we are like, how do I explain this? If, if you are doing something for God or you just in a significant moment in your life, maybe you found this before, but you will come under attack. Things will come against you. There will be relational strain and issues. I know even when we were over in the US, you know, just trying to receive so much, and I was preaching at a church there, there was a lot of stuff that went wrong back here. And it just, it, it was, I was like, devil, you just, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just hate you because you, you there's, there's all these little circumstantial things that try to rob your peace and distract you. Many things that will come, you know, just be a distraction for your life. And you ask yourself, God, why, God, why? You've got to understand that and come to peace with your circumstances. That In this world, you will have trouble. It's not always going to make sense. And sometimes God will sort some of those things out, but also you've got to know that there is an eternity waiting for us. And this world is not our home. We're passing through. So that's the first point is we need to experience peace in our hearts first. The second is, and this is really important, we need to extend peace through our lives. If we have it, then we need to give it. It would be selfish not to. And peace in Isaiah 66 is described as a river. Does anyone remember that song? I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river. You remember it? Some of you guys have been around for a long time, you know. Peace is not described as a dam or a lake. It's described as a river because it's got to flow out and through our lives. And I don't know if you watched last year, there were a lot of documentaries going on uh, around with the anniversary of 9-11 uh, last year because can you believe it was 20 years last year? It's, it was, eh? No? Was it the year before that? When was 9-11? 2001. Yes, so it was last year. And I watched one of these documentaries and I want this analogy to really impact you tonight. I mean, 
when you see those planes go into those buildings, I mean, every time you see it, you cannot not feel like that, where you were when you saw that, or some of you guys aren't even 20 years old, so you don't even remember that, but, um, but I'm sure you've watched stuff around that. But what was crazy is when that first building came down and as that first plane hit, I mean, people were just scattering and running. I mean, the whole of downtown kind of uh, Manhattan was just a full of like dust and smoke. And you see these videos on the street with people screaming and running. And then when buildings were on fire and just, and all the buildings surrounding it as that first one came down, I mean, it just didn't impact one building. I mean, everything around it. All these people scattering and running. But there was one group of people that were running the opposite way. It defied reason. It defied money. But they had a solution, and they were the firefighters. <laughs> they ran the opposite way. When the world is wanting to run this way, they're running into the building. And there's a, a photo there you can actually see. You know, this, this fireman going towards the Twin Tower when everyone else is kind of coming away. It's crazy. It's countercultural. The world says, let's get out. Christians need to say, no, no, let's, let's jump into the situation. Let's bring peace into the situation. The world's on fire right now. Would you agree? And I think God needs us to bring peace. We have to extend peace through our lives. And just a couple points, like subheading points under this thought is we need to stay focused on the real issue, the job at hand here. And you must remember something, the enemy of peace is, is not your job, it's not your boss, it's not losing a rugby game like we did yesterday. It's not politics, it's not social media, it's not a pandemic. You've got to remember something and keep focused on the issue. And I alluded to it a little bit a moment ago with spiritual attack. John 10.10 10 says this, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. That's his purpose. He wants to rob your joy. He wants to rob your blessedness, your happiness. He wants to take your peace away. Jesus says, I came that you may have life and life to the full, life in abundance. And this word abundance is, is like a supernatural state. And remember, um, in the Jewish culture, shalom, peace, was, was highly significant. And the enemy wants to enter you and God wants to fill you. The world wants to suck you dry and, and just take everything out of you, rob your peace. But God wants you to be filled up with peace so that you can bring it into this broken world. It's not a worldly battle that we're facing. We need to stay focused on the real issue and then we need to see others through our eyes. And this is so important. I could do a whole teaching on this tonight. Is there is so much racism, prejudice, um, bias in the world today. It, it's still a massive issue. But if we just began to focus on you know, see people through God's eyes. It would change everything. And so often we, we focus on the differences. But we'll never have peace if we focus on all the differences. But let's focus on what we are together on. Wasn't it amazing today on Comrades, just seeing everybody out and all the different cultures? And I mean, I, mean, I think Tanner even posted, come on, Hillcrest, let's, like kind of keep, let's do this again. You know, it was just amazing everybody coming out because there was one commonality today. We were supporting the runners. Didn't matter who you were, how old, young, what color you were, where everyone was just out, just having a good time. And I think if we focus on that, it's so powerful. Genesis 1, 27 says, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. We're all the same. Every person, every race is made in the image of God. And even if we disagree sometimes, or we have a different background, or a different mindset on life, or even religion, Surely we can have compassion for each other and understanding for each other and take peace into a world that so desperately needs it. You see, peacekeeping is, is not passive. It often brings conflict, as I said earlier, but the truth has to come out. And it's not backing down from truth, but it's, it's fighting for truth and fighting for understanding. And I think with all the tension that we experience in the world today, it's just people just don't take the time to understand, but you've got to fight to understand. Honestly, if you've battled with something or have a bias towards something or a prejudice, go and connect with that person that potentially represents that prejudice and ask for understanding. Say, can you explain to me from your perspective, your point of view? 
I promise you, it is so powerful when you can do that. You've got to fight for it. And can I encourage you? And I know there's some watching online tonight, but can I encourage all of us? Obviously, there's valid reasons why some watch online, but that's what I love about the church gathering together is we in community together. If you look around the room, just take a look around the room. Can you see everybody's different? Some, some of you look very different. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but it, we're all different. Just looking around the room here tonight. And that's the beauty about church. It's community. It's the different cultures. It's young and old. Don't you love it? It's those that maybe are new to faith. Maybe some of you are still even trying to figure out your faith. Some of you have been Christians a long time. But that is the beauty of the church. And that's why I think church is so important in gathering. Because church is not a church service. It's everything that happens in and around a church service as well that makes church. It's connecting with people, gathering together. It's hugely significant that we see others through God's eyes. And I think church is a wonderful place to that. Kind of subheading three under this is, um, let's spread peace by living peace. Martin Luther King says this, be the peace you wish to see in the world. There's also a quote about be the change that you wish to see. I love that. And maybe you're saying, well, I'd love to see more peace in the world today. Well, guess what? <laughs> God wants to use you to bring that peace to the world. It starts with you. James 3, 18, this Jesus' brother, he says this, and those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. They will, they will plant seeds of peace. Can I encourage you, wherever you go, is just to sow peace where you go. Sow the seed of peace in your office, in your family, in your school. Sow peace, sow kindness. Initiate conversations like I said a little earlier. And whenever we uh, encounter like incompleteness or a lack of peace or we see brokenness or pain, come and aim for the pain like true love does and bring peace into that situation. You don't have to have it all together to do that. You can be broken yourself. But I just love that God can use your story to bring peace to somebody else. And you might be suffering right now going through something, but God can use you. And I love... Um, well, the story I just want to share with you, uh, do you guys remember Ernest Gibbon? He was part of our church for many, many years. He used to play the drum in the early days. And um, I went to see him in hospital not long before he died. Uh, he has a picture of me and Ernie. And uh, I knew this would be the last time I saw him. So it was pretty sad, like waving goodbye to him. I just thanked him for, for who he was and all that he did. But you know, one of the things that he said to me in that hospital bed is he, he literally couldn't really move much anymore. He said, it's so frustrating. Look at my legs. He shows me how thin his legs are. He says, I can't get up and walk around now because he was walking around and praying for people and encouraging people and bringing peace into a difficult situation for many people finding themselves in hospital. And he was, he was witnessing to all the nurses. And I mean, these nurses, I mean, I spoke to one who was just saying, it's like, this guy's incredible. You know, here he is dying of cancer, but like, I'm being encouraged by his life. Isn't that incredible? Come on, let's just give a hand for, for Ernie tonight. What a, what a legend. I don't know. Maybe he has that in heaven. I'm not sure. <laughs> but he's just an amazing man. And then the last point tonight is, well, to build up to this, remember I said they will be called children of God. Well, what's, what's the point of that? Why did Jesus say that? Blessed are the peacemakers. So we experience peace in our heart, and it's got to come to us and then through us. But then it says, then they will be called children of God. We call ourselves Christians, okay? And the word Christian is actually a nickname because they were like Christ, okay? But Jesus is saying something pretty powerful here. It's almost like if you live with, in peace and you make peace, that's evidence that you are a child of God. And that's the third point. We evidence peace to our world. And we will be called children of God. It's, it's a testimony, actually. And you know why it's a testimony? It's because everything can be falling apart around us. But we have peace in our heart. It's going to be okay. God, you've got this. You can be going through the most horrific situation, but you can have peace in your heart. Blessed are those. Blessed are those. Happy are those. The world desperately needs a testimony like you tonight. Living in peace. Peace. Because of the way that you're living, the world can recognize God in you. They can go, I just don't understand. You've got peace in your heart. 
and you are still making peace in your heart. Like, how? You must be like close to, close to Jesus. Yes, I'm a child of God. You see, we don't need to wear, and, and they're okay to wear like a, a, a cross or a you know, Christian sticker on the back of your car or this Christian t-shirt. <laughs> I mean, you can wear those things. But when you have peace in a storm and you're making peace in a storm, that's when you are recognized as a child of God. You don't have to claim it. You just have to live it. And what's so powerful is the last prayer that Jesus ever prayed. Do you want to know what it is? Look at this in John 17, 22. This is so powerful. The same glory you gave me, God, I gave them. So they'll be as unified and together as we are. I in them and you in me. Then they'll be mature in this oneness and give the godless world evidence. Because I am in them, they will give this godless world an evidence that you sent me and love them in the same way you've loved me. That's Jesus talking. He wants us to be evidence. We evidence peace to the world around us. Are you with me? Do you get that? It says, because then we'll be known, we'll be called children of God. What evidence is there to your life that you are God's child? It needs to be making peace in the world around us. That you're the person that just jumps and says, whoa, 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 let's just, let's just calm the situation down. Funny story my brother told me. He, I don't even know where he was, but like two guys were about to fight. I think he was in like a cafe or something. And, and my brother, I mean, he, he, he like he kind of jumps in there not to fight. He just says, hey, hey, guys, guys this, is, this, is, this is peace. Let's just calm the situation. And one of the guys who was quite aggressive turned around to him and said, who the hell are you? And my brother just said, I'm no one, but I just don't want you to fight. <laughs> but I love how he just said, I'm nobody. <laughs> I'm no one. Not that, that movie, I'm Nobody. You know that guy that said, I'm Nobody, and he just thrashes everybody. Okay? He really did uh, bring peace to that situation. The world needs evidence, guys, and we're it, children of God. You see, we don't have to be a soapbox preacher. Do you know what those are? That stand on this thing and shout out condemnation to people with a loud halo. I'll never, ever forget this as long as I live. I had the privilege to go to the Masters tournament in Augusta. It's a golf tournament. And I was walking in with a friend of mine who was actually caddy for the guy that I was supporting. And uh, we were walking through the main entrance and there were these hordes of people, mainly men. And there was this guy standing on this little physical box with a loud halo. And he was just preaching, but condemnation and like, just giving it to them. Like, you need to repent of your sins. You're going to hell. And, and this friend of mine looked at me and he was like, that's why I don't go to church. And I felt like going up to this guy and saying, my buddy, like, you're just doing it wrong, man. Like, you're actually creating like animosity here. you riling people up. Like, there's a better way. There's a different way. He wasn't creating peace in that situation. It's just... He, some of the things he might have been saying was potentially right, but it was just with the wrong heart and in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm not saying don't preach the truth, but we've got to do it in love. We've got to do it with peace of heart. We've got to bring peace. Then we will be called children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. So I started with this and I'm gonna end with this tonight. With a lot of time left on the clock. Look at that, guys. We are never more like God than when we take the wholeness and the completeness we have into a world that desperately needs it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that you've called us as your children to be witnesses to Bring peace into this world around us, God. Help us today, more than ever before, to understand what that is, that we would, as we get a revelation of it, that we have it, that we can give it. And there's so much, God, that you've challenged us with tonight. And I just pray that this word would sink deep in people's hearts, God. Lord, I, I first pray for anyone here tonight that doesn't have peace in their heart. I pray that 
they would get a rev- revelation tonight that they are made right with you, that you're the source of all peace. Come and bring peace into their situation, God, right now. Because we can't give it if we don't have it. Even right now, by your Holy Spirit, we think of the Holy Spirit descending on Jesus. I spoke about like this picture of this dove just descending on Him. I pray that people experience your peace tonight. Take a moment, say, God, just fill me with your peace. You might be in the midst of a crazy situation, but God can bring you peace tonight. We receive it by your Holy Spirit. And then Lord, once we've had it and have it, I pray that we would make it, that we would bring peace to the world around us into every situation we find ourselves in so that others can have it. I mean, isn't that why we're here on this earth? That others can experience you, God. That we would be a witness, that we would be a testimony, that people would recognize us as the children of God so that others may be called children of God. Tonight, Lord, make us a channel of that peace. Use us.